Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative Wimp Studio. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I so appreciate you being here. I missed last week. It turned out to be way busier <laughs> than I could have ever imagined. So my friend Kristen came into town a week ago yesterday. So she came in on Thursday. We had the grandkids on Thursday. I had a doctor's appointment on Thursday because last week, early in the week, I don't know. I, I found a spot that I thought needed to be checked out. So I made a doctor's appointment and the only day they could get me in or the earliest they could get me in was Thursday. So I had, it was insane. I had the grandkids here. I had to bust out, go to the doctor's appointment. Just before I left, all the flowers for the wedding were delivered. Kristen came in around I think two o'clock or something like that. I was actually at my doctor's appointment when she got into our, to our house and she was working on the flowers when I got home and I couldn't help her because I was upstairs with the grandkids and then after the grandkids left at night I went downstairs and helped her and we were up till 12 30 and then Friday okay so because I went to the doctor and the spot that I found was nothing it was not a big deal I panicked over nothing but you know it's better to get those things checked out because you just never know well my blood pressure was they said at stroke level. So it was uh, 100 and 168 over 100 at first. And then before I left, they checked it again and it was 170 over 100. And they said, you need to see your doctor as soon as possible. So I thought, well, I'm going to stop at my doctor's on the way home because I know they say whenever you need your blood pressure checked, you can stop in and have somebody do that. So I stopped in, I had it checked. It was definitely down. They did this thing where you sit there, you sit very calm, and three minutes to five minutes after you're sitting there, it takes it, like you're in the room by yourself, and it takes your blood pressure, and then like one minute later, it takes it again, and one minute later, it takes it again. And I didn't even look at my phone. I just sat there super calm. Well, it was like the average of the three was like 145 over like high 80s so it had come down but it was still kind of high and I said and the the doctors were all busy because I would didn't have a schedule or didn't have an appointment and I just said to the I don't know nurse practitioner is that what you call them I don't know she was super sweet anyways she was new there and I said to her I said okay so my blood pressure's come down and it's probably still a little high because I'm just nerved up with all that's going on and I said but when am I just sitting down doing nothing? Like I, it was a little bit high and I'm sitting here doing nothing. I said, I'm never sitting and doing nothing. <laughs> I'm always doing something. So to me, it made it, would make it high all day long. So I made an appointment for Friday morning at eight o'clock, just so I could make an appointment with a doctor and, and actually talk to her. Well, when I went in that day, I was totally relaxed. I wasn't in a hurry. You know, like the grandkids weren't there. Kristen was, you know, wasn't arriving that day. You know what I mean? And the spot that I was concerned about was not a big deal. So my, just my demeanor had changed as well. And it was 122 over like 82. And then when I left, it was 120 over 78. I was like, thank you, Jesus, because I didn't want, I mean, I'm on blood pressure medicine, but it's a very, very low dose. And I, you know, I don't want to up that. I would love to actually get off that blood pressure medicine and not be on any medicine at all. So anyways, but that just shows you how your nerves and a lot of things going on can just, whew, that blood pressure goes up. So we had the wedding over the weekend and it was beautiful. It was an outdoor venue. It was hot. But thank goodness, Saturday, 
it was like in the 80s, but not real humid. Now for 4th of July on Sunday, it was extremely humid and hot. The grandkids came over, Bree and Eric were here. Uh, Kristen was here with her daughter and her daughter's husband. And the boys were here. I mean, it was awesome. The whole gang was here. Mom and Jerry, we were just hanging out. We had a cookout, brats and hamburgers, and we made a bunch of side salads and all that. So anyway, Sunday morning, I stayed out in Fenton, which is about 45 minutes from my house. That's out where the wedding was. And Kristen and I stayed out there Friday night and Saturday night. We stayed out there Friday because we went Friday afternoon and, you know, helped a little bit. And then um, the wedding was Saturday and Anyway, it was just made it easier than driving back and forth. So I hope you guys had a wonderful 4th of July if you live here in the States. It was awesome. And then, like I said, that was really hot. I would actually like walk through the sprinkler with the, the, that the grandkids were playing with because I just it was too hot. And then, um, thank goodness, a cold front came through yesterday. And, and we had the grandkids yesterday too. And it was chilly. Like it was in the 60s. <laughs> it was chilly last night and then today it's 70 degrees and sunny and breezy and it's just perfection so I gotta tell you a little funny hey anytime I can insert a little funny story about the grandkids I'm gonna do it so yesterday morning when the kids get there we always make them a breakfast bacon eggs and toast well I want I was craving some avocado toast so I just take an avocado and I mash it up salt pepper and some garlic powder and then I put it over uh, my favorite rye toast. Rye bread is beef steak. It's thin and it gets real crunchy when it's toasted. It's the best toast. It's really the only toast that I like. I know I've turned into a toast snob. <laughs> so I knew that the grandkids would want some too, and they're already sitting down eating. And I was mashing up the, you know, so I had my toast covered in in uh, uh, avocado. And when I sat down. I uh, knew it. They both said, I want some. So I had the other half of the avocado smashed up and I put it on their toast. So the funny part is Easton, like he's trying very delicately to hold on to his toast and not get it, the avocado on him. And he'd get it on his finger and he'd look and he'd go, booger. I'm like, no, that's avocado. And the funny part is it's like, if you think it's a booger on your toast, why are you eating it? so funny so anyways I ended up feeding him like a mother bird feeding her chick because he just couldn't stand it touching him he got a little on his arm he's like booger booger get out booger too cute but yeah they are just growing like weeds having a grand old time living their best life and um wearing grandma right out all right announcements guess what tomorrow morning I'm heading to keepsakes and I'm leaving early, early, early. I want to make sure my, my meet and greet's not till 1 p.m. It's a four and a half hour drive with no stops. So you got to figure a couple bathroom breaks and I won't need to buy any gas, but you know, just allow for traffic, allow for you know construction. I mean, being it's Saturday, it shouldn't be no like rush hour and everything, but I'd rather get there early than to get there late. So I'm probably leaving between 6.30 and 7 a.m. And that way, too, it would allow me to shop a little bit before I have to do the meet and greet. That's what I'm hoping. I really want to take a nice gander <laughs> through the whole store because when I stopped to drop off the trunk show, we were, you know, in a big hurry. And not, not only were we in a hurry, we were in a hurry because they had already closed and they were having their last StitchCon meeting before StitchCon happened and I knew they were busy so I didn't want to hold them up. So we, uh, I just want to get there early and Kevin was going to go with me. We were going to stay the night down there but he forgot that he had a gig. So he has a gig Saturday night so I'm probably going to go by myself. We'll see. But um, And then I, when I leave there I really need to get out of there by 2. Like my meet and greets 1 to 2. I really need to leave as soon as possible after that because I got to hit the road two and a half hours north back up to uh, Finley, Ohio to craft, craft gallery and pick up something that uh, Paula framed for me. It's the sampler that I'm giving to all the attendees at the Silver Needle Retreat. Speaking of that, we're leaving this coming Tuesday for the Silver Needle Retreat. That's why I'm going to get the trunk show because it's the same trunk show I'm taking to the Silver Needle Retreat. 
as well as a few other things. And, um, and plus I needed to go to Ohio anyways to pick up that framed piece. So yeah, I'll be gone all day Saturday. And then, you know, I don't work Sundays, but I may just have to, I don't know. I, I don't know. It depends on how much I get done today. By the way, today is Friday. I don't know if I mentioned it, July 9th. And it's already one o'clock and I'm recording this. I have to edit it and get it uploaded. And then I'm going to set up tables here in my studio. I'm going to lay out all the boxes, the swag boxes for the retreat. And I got to start filling them. And there's 150. So it depends on how much of that I get done today. I don't want to leave it all till Monday. So I think I'm going to be working like really late hours tonight. And I won't be home all day tomorrow because I'll be in Ohio. So basically it leaves me tomorrow and Monday, or tonight, today, tonight, and Monday to finalize all the things for the soul when you retreat. Oh my gosh. I just, I, I've been working on it all this time, but I, I was busy gathering all the stuff. And now that I have it all in, except the one thing that's supposed to be here Monday. Anyways, that's not going to have, that's not going to go in their box because I'm not going to have time. But you know, the box is like, we got to put the boxes together. I'm putting an, an image on the front of the box. We're putting all the stuff in the box and then we're tying it with a black ribbon. So I've got all that to do. And then my mom will help me and hopefully Kevin, I don't know, but we'll get it done. Every, I always just, Everything works out just like I try not to worry about stuff because have you ever like seen a wedding go completely wrong? You know, like everybody stresses out about the wedding. Then it always it always works out. Well, the same with this. Everything's going to work out. Even if I have to get there and finish doing some of the boxes, it's not that big a deal. I'll have time. So I, you know, remember blood pressure, blood pressure. I need to calm, <laughs> calm myself. And uh, so I also wanted to mention, so those are two things going on. The third thing is going on is coming in September. I am going to be at the Garden of Quilts at Thanksgiving Point in Lehigh, Utah. September, it's going to be, my classes are, are on a Saturday. It starts earlier than that. I will have a link below. Let me write that down. A link to where you can sign up for classes. Also a link just so you can watch a video of what the Garden of Quilts is all about. It's intense, it's gorgeous, it's fab. When I say intense, I just mean like, ah, the color, the beauty, it's so pretty. This, the venue is gorgeous, but then you have all these quilts hanging, it's so pretty. And there's tons of classes going on, applique, needle felt, I mean, just any, like tons of classes you can sign up for. I'm teaching a 9 a.m. watercolor class on Saturday, and then at two o'clock, I'm doing a cross-stitch class. Yes, a cross-stitch class. It's going to be for, be for, it's going to be for beginners because I'm a beginner myself. So I'll be very relatable to all these people in the class. And it's more about just an introduction to it, talk about over-dyed flosses and just show them how I do it, the sewing method, um, and have lots of handouts that has like history, um, talk about floss tube so that they can get hooked by watching all of the amazing floss tubers out there and give them links to people that are well-versed in cross-stitch, unlike myself. But people that can, you know, Jan Farish, and there's a lot of people out there that show great tutorials. And so anyways, it's going to be that kind of thing. So sign up. If you live in the area, I would love to meet you. And I would really love to have you in my class. And just, we, we're going to have, I'm going to have giveaways. We're going to have so much fun. And then my last announcement is CW Live starts August 3rd. It's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I have a link below that you can uh, get signed up if you want. Real quick, I'm just going to go through super quick uh, the projects that we're going to do because I think this is going to be my favorite session. It's going to be session six. The first one we're going to do is going to be Halloween. Check her out. And just a little heads up, this is also being stitched right now. It's a, by one of my model stitchers. So look forward to that to come. Oh, I love this piece. This is a time to reap. This as well is going to be a cross stitch. It's not out being stitched. I don't have it charted. I have it in the program. I just have to, uh, and this is actually 
for cross stitch, it's going to have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And it's going to be a little series of this cool little guy in his top hat that's blowing um, out of a cornucopia all these pumpkins and apples and leaves and stuff. And then the his wife is on the other side of the house catching an apple. It's just really cute. Cute and whimsical. That's what it's all about. Then our third project is going to be this folk art bird. Fourth project is going to be Americana. It says we are never defeated unless we give up on God. It's a Ronald Reagan quote and it's two horses. It's the Pennsylvania Dutch folk art kind of look. And then row of sheepies. Look at that. It's precious. It's going to be a long and narrow painting. It's going to be really fun. And then last but not least, of course, we always do an angel every CW Live uh, session. So it'll be an 18 by 24 of this girl. So yeah, just wanted to go through those with you in case you're interested or you know of anybody that wants to learn how to paint. Let them know. Thank you. Okay, so Q&A. I only had a, a couple questions. Margarita. She asked, what number do you use when you're doing punch needle one, two, or three? She said she wants to learn punch needle, but it's too confusing for her. I answer, answered her right in the questions because she had a couple other things she was concerned about. But I go over all of that in my tutorial, and I told her I use the CTR. I use the green handled CTR. It's for three strands. If I do use, if I were to use the Ultra Punch, I would set it at number one. I like my loops to be short. So even if you do the CTR, cut off a one eighth piece of the gauge that you get with it. It's just a little plastic tubing and you put that on your needle and it just makes your loops a little shorter. And I just like that tighter nap. So, uh, and then one of the other things she was asking about, the beveled edge, she doesn't know where that's supposed to go. So on your punch needle, there's a flat on the needle part itself. The back of it's called the back and that's the flat part. Well, the front of it has that beveled edge and that beveled edge has to face away from your hand. And then I punch away from myself. There's other teachers, there's other instructors, everybody has their own way of teaching and I think that's why there's so much confusion. But I went to a retreat last fall and there were a couple people that liked punch needle but they were struggling with it and when I showed them my technique, they got it and they loved it. So, I'm not saying mine is right and others are wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, everybody stitches differently. And I think the same with punch needle. So, you know, some, I like to have the beveled edge away from my hand and I punch away from myself or I punch towards myself. But there's a lot of people that, that hold it differently and they punch, you know, left to right, right. To right. So you have to find what works for you and you have to try different ways of doing it. Okay. But the way I teach it in my tutorial uh, seems to work for everybody I've ever taught. Um, I've taught at Sauter Village. I've taught at local uh, shops in the Michigan area. Uh, Holly Hills Primitives I've taught there several times. I've taught up in uh, Saginaw at Stitches and Things. Um, so I've never really had anybody that couldn't get it or couldn't grasp it. So that hopefully that helps some of you out there maybe that are struggling with it too. Okay, the second question was from Carol. She said, when will your Halloween fabric be available in stores? It's supposed to ship in the spring of 2022. Okay, whips. I do not have a punch needle whip. I did punch my brains out and I got my uh, punch needle primitive stitcher magazine design, punch needle design finished and it was due, I want to say it was due July 1st and I got it to her two days early guys. I think she probably fell on the floor when she saw that because I'm either right on the deadline or I'm a day or two after and she's like I really appreciate it when people send stuff in early it helps us out and I'm like yes. It's always the goal to get it to her early but that hardly happens for me. So yeah, I got that to her. So Deb was grateful and I am always grateful to be a part of her magazine. So look for that to come out 
I'm not sure when that ships. I want to say August, late August, I think the, the fall uh, magazine will ship. Okay, so I've been working a very little bit over the past couple weeks on my cross stitch pattern. So this is called Long May She Wave. This is going to be a part of a book. So this, this pattern is not available right now. It's going to be a part of Americana book that I'm working on to be released in Nashville 2022, March. So last time I showed you on Floss Tube, I had her dress done. I finished the trim on her sleeves. I put her hand in. I did her face and her hair. And then I did this little star here. So anyways, not much prog progress for two weeks, but I had company in town and a lot of things going on. So I was happy to get any stitching done, to be honest with you. I gotta take the time, guys, to put this back because if I don't, it'll get wrinkled or something will get spilled on it or I'll get ink on it. You just never know. Okay, so that's it for whips. I have some finishes to show you. I got my third painting done for the calendar and I think you all will love this one. Stay calm and stitch on. So this is, I think, the May or June image for the 2023 calendar. And I love the little kitty down in the corner. So she's doing her little cross stitch. So that felt good. That was another deadline. Cha-ching, got that done. <laughs> the biggest deadline I have after the Silver Needle Retreat, when I get home... I only have two weeks to get the next fabric line done. I know what the subject is. I have a lot of the sketches done, but I haven't painted a thing for it yet because I haven't had time. So when I get back from the Silver Nino Retreat, I'm going to have my nose to the grindstone and be working feverishly on that. Then ah, our, last, oh, our last project for session five of CW Live. Oh man, I put the crackle on her. We finished painting her and then put the crackle on and grungied it up, sanded it and everything. And she turned out so pretty. This is one of my favorite ones. I don't know what it is. I think it's her sweet little face for one. She's very childlike and innocent looking, I think. And that braid, oh, I love her braid. But yeah, look at how the crackle turned out, you guys. Crackle is, is a mystery. Like every time you use it, you never know exactly how it's going to turn out. And when it turns out super good like that, it's a thrill. So yeah, got Ariel finished and I don't know where I'm going to hang her somewhere in the studio. I have got to find room for her because she's a keeper. All right, guys, so I got some nice haul. Kristen and I had time on our way out to the wedding venue to stop at Hobby Lobby. I haven't been in Hobby Lobby in months. The first thing that I purchased there was, we saw it on our way in. I don't know how your Hobby Lobby is set up, but ours is like you have an entryway, so you come in these slider doors to the side, and then you come in slider doors this way. Well, in that area it's fairly large and they usually have furniture pieces and display pieces and stuff like that out there before we even came in that's where i found the first thing and i will insert pictures of what it looks like i think i have before pictures i obviously have after pictures <clears throat> but what i did is i used the dixie bell iron pantina to grungy up the drawer fronts and the top of this piece because it looked cool the way it was, but I wanted it more grungy. That's just how I am. So for Witch of Paint and Wednesday this past week, that's what I worked on. And I grungied it all up, let it dry overnight, and it looks absolutely incredible. Now what I have to do is I'm going to put black paper in the bottom of each one of those drawers. Because I'm going to use it to store my DMC floss by color, some classic color works 
floss by color. And then the big drawers, there's four big drawers at the bottom. I'm probably going to start putting some linen in there because I'm running out of room where I currently store my linen. So I love how it turned out and it's a great addition to my studio. The other thing I was looking for, of course, as everybody does when they go to Hobby Lobby, is look for finishing pieces. So I got this piece. I don't know if you can see it, but I love that those little beads or whatever you call it going around the side or the four sides, four edges, whatever. <laughs> so let me give you the number. The SKU is five, five, two, three, three, five, two. It's a six by six inch. $7.99 and it was, I think it was 50% off all the red, white, and blue stuff. Love this one. Land that I love. I love the way it is just as it is now, but of course I will probably paint over all of this and grungy it up myself because even if I put something over it, it's going to have to be big enough to cover this lettering and it kind of comes close to the edge. But anyways, I'm going to give you the skew on that. It's 5603998. And it was $5.99. And like I said, it was all on sale. I love this piece. Again, I will probably paint over the words and then um, grunge it up myself. I might even, I might even take these metal pieces. So those stars, that's a metal piece. I could take those off and um, do the rust pantina on them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. That was $9.99. And it measures 9.44 by 5.5 inches. And the number for this one is 5695507. It might be hard to find these because since 4th of July is over, it just, I don't know if they are going to have any of this in stock. This one, and I'm not crazy about the bright colors. I definitely will either paint over, or probably just paint burgundy over these two and then just grungy the whole thing and then my piece could go right here in the center and this one was $9.99 like I said of course it was on sale measures 15.75 by 7.75 and the skew on that one is 5679709 and then last but not least this one's so cute This one was $11.99, measures 15 and three quarter by seven and three quarter inches. And the number is 54147194. But look how cute that would be with a cross stitch piece over it or even punch needle. All right. Okay guys, so I, I'm going to have a little insert, video insert of what's new in Etsy. So these are things that are actually not new in Etsy. <laughs> They're not listed yet. These are things that I have laying around the studio that I'm just tripping over because I don't have room for all these paintings, yet I continue to paint. You know, um, I would rather have someone enjoy them in their home, you know, and um, have them on display in their home. So. These are paintings that if you see something you like, please email me at teresacogat3 at gmail.com with the title of the painting that I mentioned in the video, and I can make the listing right away for you. So I'm just doing it that way because I'm, eventually all of them will be listed in Etsy, but with the retreat coming up and all of that, I don't really have time. So uh, if you do email me that you want something, it'll be after the retreat, so it won't be this coming week. It'll be the following week, okay? It'll be, what What would that be, the third week of July? Oh, that seems impossible. Yeah, we leave on the 13th, and we'll be home on the 19th. So, yeah, Tuesday the 20th, you know, that week in there. So, yeah, that's the third week of July. What is happening? The summer's going way too fast, you guys. So, yeah. I'm going to insert that picture or that picture. I'm going to insert that video now. Hey guys. So what's new in my Etsy shop? Well, right now, nothing, <laughs> but I am going to be adding my originals 
probably not until sometime in August, September, October, like anyways, towards the fall, I will be adding a lot of original paintings because I'm running out of room in my studio to store them. So I'm just gonna do a quick flip through of my originals. If you see something that you like, mention it in the comments and maybe that's something I can get posted in Etsy sooner rather than later. So let's take a little quick tour, okay? Okay, this one is on a cradled board. It's 12 by 16 called Home. That one I am definitely gonna have for sale eventually. But like I said, if you want it sooner rather than later, let me know and I will list it and then um, let you know I listed it. This one was done in CW Live as well. That will be for sale. It's a 10 by 10, no, 12 by 12. Oops. We have Whimsy Chicks here. This could be called, I think I called it Sisters, but it could be a mother and daughter as well. So that one would just be call it Whimsy Chicks Sisters. Here is a Whimsy Chick Sisters as well. <laughs> but this one, call this Whimsy Chicks Poppies if you're interested in that one. Oh, this is Bellissimo. I don't know that I'm going to sell her. I just really love her. I don't know if I'm going to sell that one. If you're interested, let me know and I'll give it some consideration. This is Jolly Soul. Um, that was from our uh, CW Live class as well. I'm selling that. That's a 12. No, what is it? That's a 16 by 20. This one I'm not selling. This one I'm selling. Haunted Night. It was Haunted Night. Oh, it's a 16 by 20. This one is Harvest Chalkboard. Also a 16 by 20. I will be selling that one. This is Primitive Halloween Cat. Now this one is a 16 by 20. It's on canvas. Hear that? So that is a canvas, nice and prim. Love it. This is on a cradled board. This one is called Conscience. Just let me read that. Be grateful. That's also, I think that's more like, that's not a 16 by 20. It's not a standard size, but it's done with that caramel colors paint. So you can see it's very textured and real prim. So that one I will sell as well. This is uh, Whimsy Chicks Cheers. And I love the paint I used for the little champagne it has a glitter in it. I don't know if you can really see the glitter, but anyway, a little sparkly paint. And I love their little snarky faces. Okay, this one is called Christmas Joy. This is a 16 by 20 cradled board. I'm gonna be selling that. I'm going to be selling her, I can't think of her name, Hope. Let me see, Rose Hope Angel. I'm gonna be selling that one. And then this is like a 12 by 24. Oh, I can't remember her name. Um, just put just put tall, narrow tall angel in white dress or something if you're interested in that one. As much as I love this one, I'm probably going to be selling this one as well because these larger paintings I really don't have room for. And um, this one is called Carry No Burdens. Oh, we recently finished that in CW Live. That one is called Help Someone. This one is called Blessed Are the Merciful. That is a 16 by 20 cradled board. And then 
And then this one, that's Bella. I think Bella. I think that's what I named her. Anyways, that's Bella the cow. That is a 16 by 20 cradle board. It's got a lot of nice texture and stuff in it. We can call this one folk birds or fractor birds. That is a 8 by 10. No, that's bigger than 8 by 10. That's 11 by 14. 11 by 14. This is also 11 by 14 Americana chicks. This one, Let Freedom Ring, Cradled Board, 11 by 14. She Saved Every Bee, 11 by 14, Cradled Board. I love the spattering in that. We did that in CW Live. Okay, guys, so that's it for now. I do have more originals. Also, just know that all of those originals that I just showed you, I will be also offering those in prints in different sizes, like eight by 10, 11 by 14, and 16 by 20. And larger on some of them if, you know, cause the larger ones, when I scan them, I can, you know, they're obviously bigger already. So when I scan them at 300 DPI, they will be that large. Like I can't scan something that is an eight by 10 and make it and scan it at 300 DPI and then make it an 18 by 24 it would be too pixelated and blurry and it wouldn't look good so anyways that's it so if you see something you like just message me or put it in the comments and I will get with you if that's something you're interested in purchasing okay thanks for watching okay guys so now we're on to giveaway and I uh, you had to say punch needle for the giveaway and the giveaway is three of my punch needle tutorials I'm going to give away. So I will insert the YouTube random comment picker here. All right, you had to say punch needle in your comment last time. To, I'm gonna pick three people to win. Oh, hold on, I gotta write this down. Congratulations, Colorado Cross Stitcher. She said, her name is Sherry, by the way. She said, I do want to learn to punch needle and I know your tutorial would be great. Just finished All Creatures, and it was one of my most enjoyable pieces I have ever done. I just loved it. Showed it on my floss tube number 13. Hope your next two months are calm and super productive. Thank you so much, Sherry. Me too. <laughs> so congratulations. Let me write this down. So you guys go check out her floss tube channel if you haven't already. All right, let's pick another winner. Our second winner is Christine Gomez. I would love to learn to punch needle. I am afraid I will hurt myself with it though. I'm so clumsy. <laughs> Christine, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So congratulations, Christine Gomez. All right, one more person. And our third and final winner today is Michelle Mead. And she said, yes, I want to learn punch needle. I love the look. And your work is so nice. I saw Vanna's and I enjoyed it. Congratulations, Michelle. All right, that's awesome. So if all three of you ladies could please email me at TeresaCogut3 at gmail.com so that I have your email address, I can add you to the tutorial and you'll have it for free. And then you'll fall in love with Punch Needle just like me. <laughs> all right, congratulations. And thank you so much, everyone, for your comments. Congratulations, Sherry, Christine, and Michelle. If you could just email me at TeresaCoke at 3 at gmail.com, I will hook you up with that tutorial. I could do it before I leave or even while I'm gone. I can do all that on my laptop. So, yeah, just let me know that you won and give me your email address, and that's how I have to add you to the tutorial. So, yay, congratulations. So uh, I'm not going to have, obviously, this is a fairly short floss tube because of all the things I have going on right now. I'm trying to get, you know, the Silver Needle Retreat underway. So I'm not even doing a giveaway this week. Sorry, guys, but I just need to, like, chill for now. <laughs> and I will not have a floss tube next week because I will still be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But when I get back, we get back on a Monday, I probably will just 
you know, wait until that next week to do that next weekend to do a floss tube. So yeah, maybe I'll get some stitching done at the retreat or in the car. I don't know. I don't know about stitching because I have to have my magnifying light. So I don't know that I can, you know, I probably, I'll probably work on punch needle instead. I have that angel all kitted up and ready to go and I can do punch needle in the dark. No, not in the dark, but I mean, I can do it without magnification. I can do it without, you know, bright, bright light. So it's very versatile for me. So that's what I'll probably work on between that and sketching and uh, doing some, maybe some color pencil stuff in my sketchbook. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And I will be back in a couple weeks with another floss tube and hopefully lots of photos. And I'm so excited about this retreat. I can't wait to share all the fun things that go on. So anyways, have a great couple weeks and don't forget, create every day. Bye.